And now your host, real estate broker, consultant, and best-selling author, Todd Tremonti. It's Terminator time. The machines are coming. Artificial intelligence, virtual reality. Is it changing everything in real estate? We're getting into it today. Is your real estate agent going to be out of business because artificial intelligence is going to help you find your house and sell your house? Is virtual reality going to remove the need for people to physically visit homes and view homes? Is your remodeling ability going to be able to help you stretch the value of your home? Or is massive digital progress, digital analysis going to commoditize the housing market? Well, I can give you a short answer to all that right now. No, 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 and no. But we're going to get into the details of it as we make our way through the show. But we want your questions as well. You are listening to DFW Real Estate. Uh, We do this every Saturday right here. You can also catch us on the podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. Just look up DFW Real Estate Weekly. Uh, Or you can usually just search my name because a lot of those other words are pretty common words. But if you search Todd Tremonti, You'll find us on the podcast stuff, on YouTube, on all the social media platforms, and you can engage with us there. Last week, we had a running survey on what Courtney's nickname should be. I think that may still be up. We'll get to that here in a little bit. If you've got a question, you can call or text 214-310-0008. 214-310-0008. If you're thinking about buying or selling, or if maybe you're thinking about a remodel or freshening up or protesting your property taxes, or you're just looking how to enjoy your home more, maybe get something done on the roof or the plumbing, the electrical, the interior, the kitchen, the patio, the driveway, landscape, anything else, call, text. We'd be glad to help. We'd love to talk you through it right here on the show or anytime throughout the week. 214-310-0008 or online all day and night, just like my son says. ToddTremontiTeam.com. ToddTremontiTeam.com or just Google my name. Get as close as you can to spelling it. And you'll be able to get right in touch with anyone on our team, oftentimes the one and only Ian Daniels. Hey, this first segment is going to be brought to you by Patrick Gleros and his mortgage team at Cardinal Financial. If you're looking to uh, get a mortgage to purchase a home, if you're looking to refinance, if you may be looking to even do an investment property, reach out to Patrick and his team, patrickgleros.com, G-L-A-R-O-S, patrickgleros.com. You can start an application right there on the website. You can give uh, his office a call, 972-728-3420, NMLS number 308-804, or go to toddtremonyteam.com, click the radio tab in the top right corner, and you will find all of our recommended pros and vendors. Those are the soothing tones of the Yanni Donnie, ladies and gentlemen. The English wonder himself, he's playing hurt today. Still. He's playing hurt. Still got a, six. got a brace on that wrist from a near NBA quality pickup basketball game. Uh, But listen, he's been cheering on the borough with one hand. He's been helping run the real estate team over at the Tatramani Home Selling Team with one hand. He's been typing emails, taking phone calls, talking to many of you who are thinking about buying and selling a home this summer, thinking about a lake house and investment property, short-term rental, long-term rental, or making a move with you or your family. And you can call him throughout the week, 214 Three one zero 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 eight. Same phone number you call here on the show, and just say, "Hey, Ian, we're thinking about buying. We're thinking about selling. I'd love to talk with you more about that. I'd like to hear more of those soothing, beautiful English tones." I do still have two hands, to be clear. Yeah, I just can't use. Just one of, them. one of them is wrapped in a in a solid black cast brace Darth looking Vader thing. Darth looking thing. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty uh, pretty robotic looking. Listen, folks. At the moment, we're going with full price Courtney. I'm going with courts for the nickname. You know, listen, you do you, Ian. That's what the kids say these these days. What's the audience saying? Uh, The audience, uh, the votes were, there was a smattering of voting, and I don't know that we had a consensus response. Uh, I do think Full Price Courtney had some momentum. Yeah, it has the most votes. It has the most votes. I don't know that we're at a tipping point yet where we're going to say that that it won. So go find our Instagram account, at Todd Tremonti Realtors. Uh, there's one of our most recent posts, eh, one of the last couple of weeks. Uh, it just it gives you a chance to vote. You can even see a picture. You don't all you don't often get a visual of the radio producer, but, but there you, I am. There she is with all of your options for her nickname. So go to Instagram, look up at Todd Tremonti Realtors, vote for Courtney's nickname. But for now, we're gonna go with full price Courtney. Uh, she likes a high quality product service. <laughs> 
Not all, not always going to negotiate for the lowest possible price. Doesn't necessarily want to shop around. Just nope. Just <laughs> give me your price full and I'll pay price. It. All of it, guys. I want it done uh, well. I'll pay that. What's wrong with me? Well, not nothing. You're learning. You're learning to. Uh, Ian, I feel like so shamed by you. Adulting's hard. It is. And listen. It just as soon as you figure one thing out, then they throw another one at you. That's and I don't know who they are necessarily, but it's they're, just out the they're out there. They're out there. They. they. <laughs> we love you, Courtney, and Thanks, uh, you know we're gonna keep we're gonna keep helping you, you learn that oftentimes full price is the right price, right? There are things, real estate agents being one of them, by the way, where cheaper is almost never ever better, right? Like if you. If your mom is an incredible, legitimate, amazing, full-time dedicated real estate broker and she wants to do you a favor, do that. That's great, right? But if your knucklehead cousin will discount his commission and is unlikely to get across the street by himself, that person should not help you but just because the price is lower, right? If uh, if the mechanic is like, you know, I'll do it for a hundred bucks if you'll pay me cash and don't tell anyone, that's probably not going to go well for you, right? So um, full price, Courtney? We're sticking with it until the votes tell us otherwise at Todd Tremonti Realtors on Instagram and all sorts of social media. So find us out there. Find the podcast at DFW Real Estate Weekly. And uh, we got the show going up on the podcast as well as some bonus content, information about real estate tips for individual areas around the Metroplex and other topics. We're going to get into several more of those today as we make our way through the show. But PMR Roofing wrapped up putting a brand new roof on a brand new house for my family uh, just this last week. And I gotta be honest, first of all, new construction goes through these, these random phases where it feels like nothing's happening and then all of a sudden something great happens. And finishing the roof is huge. Makes it feel like a real house. Um, and they did an incredible job. They were so thoughtful. Uh, we didn't have to ask them to do simple things like cleaning up and picking up nails and moving their materials around because there's other vendors on the property. It's, we're building the new house. And uh, they're, they're just super easy to deal with. And then I saw where on another job site recently, they built kind of makeshift covers to protect flower beds, which just roofing companies don't typically do this. They come in like a whirlwind, blow up your yard and run out in the you know dead of night. Uh, PMR Roofing does it right. If you need a roof, if you need someone to check your roof, and by the way, you do need someone to check your roof if you haven't had anybody up there in the last two years. If you're anywhere near kind of the central region of North Dallas and you might've had a little bit of hail last week, Go to PMRRoofing.com. PMRRoofing.com. Ask for our buddy Jordan Collins. They're going to take really, really good care of you over there. Let's talk about AI. It's all, I've got a lot of questions here about AI. Um, artificial intelligence, if you don't know what AI is. Just check in. I figured that was the one, but there are other there are other AI acronyms out there. How afraid, if any, should we be of AI when it comes to real estate? If you listen to cousin Elon Musk... Um, it's bad. It could be really, really, really bad. Um, at the moment, in regard to your residential real estate needs, I think it's very good. I think there's some really, really cool uses. You're still going to need someone. AI is like the internet right now. And now this could change. It could be changing elsewhere. But as far as publicly accessible use of artificial intelligence, and most people right now are either unfamiliar or they're familiar with chat GPT. Or maybe some of the new uh, being, is it Bard? Um, so Microsoft Bing has an invest, massive investment in an AI tool. I believe it's called Bard. Someone could check it real quick and, and, and tell me if I'm right or wrong. But um, those type of AI uh, tools where the public has access to it, at the moment, they're just tools. It's like a website. It's like the internet. It's like a camera. It's like a database. It's a tool. It has its constraints. Now, the world of artificial intelligence goes way, 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 way beyond what I'm talking about. But as far as these publicly accessible tools that the average home buyer, home seller, or real estate agent, broker, or lender has access to, it is a really, really cool tool that can help your agent market your home better, analyze data better, um, get access to information faster, um, help you make better decisions on a shorter timeline with more confidence and a bunch of other really cool things. But the idea that AI is going to take near human form and be able to lead and guide and advise someone the way that a great real estate agent or broker should, 
No, that's that's not anytime soon. So what what are the main what are the main ways that AI is going to affect real estate? Um, and and how if if somebody you can look at this from two two sides, right? If you're a homeowner, yep. H- how should you be using AI? There was, a, there was an article that was reading that gave some ideas like yep. predictive maintenance and right. things like that. It can be used for. But also, if you're in real estate, if you're working in real estate, what yep. are some of the ways that people are going to So, use I'm going to give you an answer that you rarely hear from me. And the answer is, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm going to give you some really cool things that I do know. But obviously, this is a technology with some capabilities that the creators of the technology don't fully understand. You're, you're sort of giving a, a, a non-human entity the ability to learn and teach itself things. I read something just this week about how... Um, an AI tool learned Bengali, like the language, and no one had prompted it to learn Bengali. <laughs> Someone prompted it with a little tiny bit of Bengali writing in an unrelated deal, and just it deduced the entire language from a sample of Bengali like letters, basically. So it's a technology that's going to do some things that no one fully understands yet. And that's where some people are really, really scared of where it could go. But in relation to what we are talking about, publicly free, open open API, open source, open code AI, where we can interact with it in typically like a chat bot type scenario, is really only limited or expansive in relation to how we can prompt it, right? So here's a couple of examples of what you're talking about. I could go into ChatGPT, for example, and say, create a home maintenance schedule for me for my home, which has a slab foundation, was built in 1967 out of primarily, you know, uh, brick and timber with a eight-year-old air conditioning unit, a 14-year-old hot water heater, and original light fixtures, electrical system, and plumbing system. And it will do things that would really, really, really probably blow your mind if you haven't been working with it a lot. It it will make connections that you didn't tell it to make. Um, I have, I I put in a list of uh, leftover building material from our new construction project and told it, create a build plan with the following list of materials. Maximize the use of the materials, build the largest structure you can, that is safe from weather and gave it a couple of uses I wanted it to have. And about 25 seconds later, it created, I mean, it it was able to conceptualize what all those things were and not waste a bunch of, it was amazing. So you could do that sort of thing. Real estate agents all over the place are saying, write a property description for a house that has three bedrooms, two bathrooms, 2,200 square feet, a quarter acre lot, an updated kitchen, wood floors and then it's creating the narrative form the the sort of flowery language of that now i don't think it's wise to then just copy paste and use that but i do think it's a great idea to get sort of a rough draft from it and then save professionally save some time and then go polish that up later people are doing that to create ads newsletters social media posts people are writing books with ai um they're writing hiring ads. They're writing job manuals. I mean, lots of things in that regard. But the maintenance item is one how a, a homeowner could create something very, very simply and quickly that they could, for the most part, trust to enjoy homeownership more going forward. I just asked ChatGPT how it can help me because yep. uh, I work in real estate. Yep. And uh, it just told me, oh, dang it, it refreshed. Never mind. Well, It gave me a list of seven items. Oh, right there. It gave me a list of seven ways that it can help me. Uh, market research, um, gathering information, analyzing data, uh, create compelling property descriptions for listings, client communication, um, you know, writing emails on things, legal and regulatory knowledge, uh, creating comparative market analysis, industry insights, and financial Now, let me, let me point out some of the risks of this, right? Because all those things are functional uses of it. Most of those are um, create create writing, create yeah. text, right? Yeah. Now, it can do more than that. I mean, and by analyzing the way, data and things like chat that. ChatGPT is a chat interface yes. with an AI, right? So it's made for text interaction. There are other AIs that do images and videos and yep. data analytics. You could tell you could tell ChatGPT write the code for an Excel spreadsheet that would calculate this data. 
and it will do that. And then you can just go drop it into a spreadsheet. Yep. It, that's cool. But the, the, where there's risk, and this is, this is just a reflection of the residential real estate industry, most agents are really bad at their jobs. If you're an agent, I'm not necessarily talking to you unless you're bad at your job. But the problem is there are a bunch of lazy realtors that would go in there and say, draw up a legal document to bind my client to this or to bind their client to this or to, you know, do this or that and, and, and not be careful enough to make sure that they ch run that by an actual attorney that's state specific, that understands the complexities. AI will give you some really bad information sometime and some bad ideas and some bad answers and things like that. This is by no means an advertisement or promotion of any AI tools, chat GPT or otherwise. We use it, obviously, and I would consider us an early adopter of this. And I'm often not an early adopter of certain technology because of economies of scale and functionality and things. But this is one that I do think is really cool and really powerful. We're being careful with it and we're cautious of what it could be. But the cat is out of the bag and it is impacting every industry that you interact with, whether you know it or not. By the way. Most of us have been interacting with AI for years. We just haven't thought of it that way. Alexa and Siri and all these things are, you know, what a lot of people would call a technology stack. And there's a lot of AI in there. The ability to finish a thought, complete a sentence, you know, the, um, on your phone, when you start to type a word and it fill, it, it can complete it for you. That's artificial intelligence saying, based on all the, the data we have, they're probably typing this word. Um, and, and there's a ton of other stuff. How does Amazon know what products to suggest to you? Because it's creating some artificial intelligence around what you like and don't like in your patterns and things. This is everywhere in our lives, y'all. This A lot of commodities are priced this way. The automatic price adjustments of things. By the way, don't even get me started on what it could do, what it is doing and has been doing in the stock market and things. So we can talk more about that. But there's just a glimpse of what's happening in and around AI as long as, as far as residential real estate. And at the moment, in our industry, I don't think there's anything to be afraid of. But I want to warn people, it's not a complete tool. It will help you save a ton of time. You still need to be an intelligent adult. And it is in no way going to replace the need for a real estate agent to lead and guide and advocate for people. Well, and the good news is when the robots all turn on us, Optimus Prime and Bumblebee will be there to save us. So. More than meets the eye. I've seen the movie many times. So we're Transformers. In good hands. We're in good hands. No. Let me tell you about DP Lambert at Goosehead Insurance. Uh, he has saved me thousands of dollars over the years. And so many of our clients me and friends too. and family members, Todd, so many of us, have used DP um, for our home and our auto insurance, and he has shopped it around. You know, he's looking at well north of 30 different companies, figuring out, am I best to bundle? Am I best to do things separately um, so that we can get the best coverage at the uh, the cheapest price that he can possibly do for us? DP.Lambert, L-A-M-B-E-R-T at goosehead.com is where you can reach out to him. You can call him at 214-838-5684. DP.Lambert at goosehead.com is his email address, touchmyteam.com. Click the radio tab and you will find all of the recommended pros and vendors that we talk about on the show right there. Yep. Um, so the other thing that we're talking about is virtual reality. Um, and we can dig into that a little bit more later too. But when we think about AI, artificial intelligence, I begin to think about virtual reality. And I think that's the one, believe it or not, that might have an even bigger impact in residential real estate. And we'll talk about that more a little bit later in the show. we got a whole bunch to cover. We're going to try to get to it now. You're listening to DFW Real Estate with Todd Tremonti. All day, every day, we run the Todd Tremonti Home Selling Team, where we help hundreds of people buy and sell homes. Thousands of people gather information and make wise choices for them, their family, their finances, in and around their houses, their condos, their townhomes, their land, their homes, farms and ranches, ranchettes, all of that good stuff. We want to be a resource for you. We're not looking to sell you something unless it's time for you to buy or sell something. But if we could add value in your life related in any way to your home, we want to do that. And then some way down the road, some time down the road, uh, we would, you know, of course, we'd love an opportunity to find out if we're a fit for you and you're a fit for us. Anything you need related to real estate, just go to ToddTremontyTeam.com, like my son says. ToddTremontyTeam.com. Or just Google Todd Tremonti Team. You'll find us. You go find the website. You can click on any button, call any phone number, fill out any form. And uh, we would be thrilled to help you in any way. We have our summer fun guide coming out in the next week or two. Really, really cool. I think it's 24 pages 
of our team, the Tatra Money Home Selling Team's recommendations on ways to beat the we, beat the heat, have fun at home, best burger joints in DFW, best ice cream spots in DFW, best places to see fireworks. We have our annual coloring contest in there, all sorts of cool stuff. If you would like to get a copy of our summer fun guide, uh, I'm looking at you, talking to you, mostly moms, some dads too, whatever. But if you're planning on having a lot of time at the house with the kiddos this summer, trying to find answers to, what are we doing? I'm bored. What can we do? This isn't fun. Our summer fun guide is intended to make this summer a fun, engaging, family connection opportunity. Uh, great for singles, great for families, young and old. If you would like a copy of that, just go to toddtremontiteam.com. Click contact us, and uh, in that contact form, just say, I'd love a summer fun guide. Give us enough information so we can connect with you. We can get you a digital one, or we could even mail you one out. We've already got over 700 people that are going to be receiving it. That's right, 760-something so far, I think, to be precise. And uh, we've got a handful, a couple hundred more that we'd be happy to send out to the first couple hundred people that would like one. Go to TodTremontiTeam.com, click contact us, and let us know that you would like a summer fun guide. Hey, while they're at the website, Ian, what else could they do? They can get their home valuation. We've actually got a really cool brand new tool that's uh, that's been live and active on our website for about the last week and a half. Mm -hmm. uh, you can just go to the sellers tab that's right there on the homepage. Just click sellers, selling, uh, anything home around that. Any right there, that. it's going to send you to a brand new page and um, you can get all your home value uh, information right there. If you want to get info on what a cash offer might look like, if you want to get information on what a comparative market analysis would be, if you want to get any information Check whatsoever your home about selling, go to the Todd Tremonti team website, toddtremonteam.com, click the sellers tab and you can get it right there. Yep, really fast too. Like in under a minute, find out what your home would sell for. You can ask for a cash offer, track your home equity, uh, and and really see a, a really cool visual of how that lays out over time uh, and, and get a ton of value there. Do you like peanut butter? I do. Actually. Jelly? I like peanut butter. I like jelly. I like apple butter too. Do you like feeding hungry kiddos? I do. You know what I don't like? The fact that there are hungry kiddos. That's it, yeah. This is the time of year that we are kicking off the PBJ drive, right? That's right. The month of June, I get angry, but I also get excited. I get angry that there are children and and elderly and anyone in a community like Dallas Fort Worth with all the affluence, with all the heartfelt desire to solve real problems in the world. This is a problem we can all get together on. Nobody that I know that's a decent human being likes the fact that people don't have enough food. Let's feed the hungry people in our communities, regardless of whether you agree with why people are hungry or your politics or your economic situation. Let's get together on the fact that we're going to feed hungry kiddos. So starting in June, our annual PBJ drive will be bigger and better than ever. We're going to serve the North Texas Food Bank, the Tarrant Area Food Bank. We're going to fill those shelves during the month of June when there's the most demand and the least supply for the folks in our community that just need food on the table. Peanut butter and jelly lasts a while on the shelf, provides some basic nutrition, uh, and, and generally makes people happy. So join us. Go to pbjdrive.com. If you're ready to be involved right now, uh, just go to Venmo and at pbjdrive, you can send uh, cash to. Uh, we're partnering with a bunch of our media partners, a bunch of our vendor partners, and we are going to fill the gap, step in, love our neighbor, and meet the need this year. Go to pbjdrive.com or you can Venmo 20 bucks, 50 bucks, 100 bucks, 1000 bucks. We had some really juicy, nice size givers last year that wanted to feed hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of families. We'll do the same. We'll see you there at PBJ Drive on Venmo. We'll be back with more DFW real estate right after the break. We'll be talking a little bit more about virtual reality, AI, what's happening in the DFW real estate market with property values this summer and what you need to know if you're thinking about buying, selling, or simply enjoying your home. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Welcome back, party people, live from the Keen Landscaping Studios. We're talking artificial intelligence. We're talking virtual reality, but we are still talking DFW Real Estate. We got plenty to cover. Your questions, whenever you've got them, call or text 214-310-0008. All week, every week, we're talking to you. We're helping you buy, sell, remodel the kitchen, find a contractor who can do granite, who can do wood floors, who does plumbing and electrical. With the Todd Tremonti Home Selling Team, 
with an office in Richardson, North Dallas, and an office just west of downtown Fort Worth. If you're thinking about making a move this summer, buying, selling, investing, upgrading, downsizing, let's have a chat. Uh, if you'll call 214-310-0008, who do they typically get to talk to, Ian? Maybe me. Maybe Ian. The man, the myth, the legend, the Burrow fan himself, Ian Daniels. This first segment is, as always, brought to you by Patrick Cleros and his mortgage team over at Cardinal Financial. If you're looking to refinance, if you're looking to uh, make a purchase on a home, maybe you're looking for an investment property, Patrick is where you need to go for all of your mortgage needs. Uh, PatrickGleros.com is the website. You can start an application right there, PatrickGleros.com. You can call him at 972-728-3420, NMLS number 308804. Love how you say it. To be clear, the other reason you might call Patrick right now is just to make sense of what in the heck is happening in the world of mortgage. I'm talking to him about once a week right now, right? We're in the middle of a yeah. project. We did some construction financing. We're going to roll that into some mortgage financing. And there are so many more options than most people think, right? Like if you go to a big giant bank and you're like, I want a mortgage. They're like, okay, here's the, here's what it's going to cost. Here's the option with Patrick. We're talking about if you put this much down, we can do that. If you put that much down, we can do that. If you want the lowest rate, you can do this. But if you don't mind as much about rate, we can do that. This is a product I have for this kind of thing. And this is a product I have for this. Do you want to look at 15 or 30? Well, there's actually some other terms out there right now. I mean, I've probably looked at, I'd say, 20, 22, 23 different options. Now, we're really only considering about four of them. But that's still four times more than most people consider. And we're tinkering with the numbers. And he's saying, hey, I saw something the other day. The limits changed on that. Go back, log back in and take a look at it. I've updated all those numbers. So look, I mean, if you have any mortgage questions at all, just go to patrickglaris.com or give him a call. Well, I was going to say, like, if, if you just don't even know, like, can I even afford to buy a house right now? Mm -hmm. or, or a townhome or con like whatever or it is. Or the one I want. I just don't know. Like, I was having a conversation with uh, one of the parents on Noah's basketball team. And he was just like, oh, man, I would, I would, I would like to, yeah. but I, I just don't know if I can. And I was like, we'll just reach out to Patrick, have a conversation with him, and he'll, he'll shoot straight with you. Like yeah. he'll give you a very clear idea as to whether or not you can. By and the way, did, and it was great. In that situation, she, she found out she could, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. And I'll, I, I don't say who she is, of course. But the, the reason I ask that is because a lot of people are realizing that right now, right? They've heard. Yeah rates quote unquote went through the roof. They did not, they did go up and, and payments are more than they were, you know, a year and a half ago, but many, many, many people are finding out, Oh, okay. I have a much more reasonable and affordable approach on that house. And even with the slightly higher mortgage payment, I can still do this. And we're finding a lot of people going from this kind of anxiety or near depression about their housing situation to some pretty big excitement especially as we head into this summer. So if you even want to scout your opportunity, call 214-310-0008. Really good chance you get to speak with the English wonder himself, Ian. And then we can get you handed off to Patrick or whoever the right person for you to talk to if you need to talk to anyone or one of our full-time, fully dedicated, world-class real estate agents and specialists here on the team. And they can get you squared away on buying, selling, investing, or maybe just... Um, you know, tweaking how you're living in your home to enjoy it more. Doesn't If you don't need to buy or sell, we're not certainly not going to try to pressure you to do that. We just like to add value in your world, in and around your real estate needs. Knowing Patrick like I know him, I know he would be thrilled to know that he is sponsoring the Cockney Rhyming Slang segment. Uh, I'm sure he's Maybe our most popular it. segment that we have on the show is maybe, what I'm hearing from the streets. Maybe not, but maybe so, you know. It's what I'm hearing. Anyway, you ready? You Here's today's pies. words. Oh, gosh. Mince pies. Wait, Mince hold on. pies. Minced pies. Not minced. Mince. Okay. Mince. Mince pies. Mince pies. Based on your track record, words that rhyme with mince pies are probably not the answer because they a lot of it times rhymes. these things don't it actually rhymes. rhyme. Mince pies. Something about crying? Yeah, not necessarily. We're in the region. Okay, like um, uh, mince. You pie. may even say, "I like your minces." Oh, you got gosh. a nice. I like your mince pies. Oh, I like your your something eyes. Just eyes. You think uh, you got it? I like your eyes. Yeah, you like your eyes. Mince oh, pies. There's no. Way. I won. Well done. I'm not bad at this segment. <laughs> That's Excellent. what's scary. That's what's scary. I love a riddle. Now here's the thing, mince pies. 
loosely rhymes with eyes, but it's the pies part. And he said, oftentimes they shorten it to I like your minces. Right, That's the part that doesn't rhyme. No, because it started, as, it started as mince pies. And I like then your it just squints goes, and then eyes. Just it to but minces. why not say I like your pie? I mean, that could get inappropriate mince if you're pies. not careful. But uh, we can eat you mince use pies. it in a sentence? I get that. Well, you say I like your minces. I like your minces. But again, yeah. that's the part that doesn't rhyme. Have you ever said that? No, I'm not a Cockney, though. Oh. I'm from the North. Yeah. Uh -huh. To be clear. And but that's, it is absolutely still used I'm going to protect Ian from saying something he shouldn't say and just mute his mic real fast. But <laughs> people from the North often aren't as kind to the people from the South. Oh. And maybe vice versa. Uh. But oh, oh, he's unmuted himself. Definitely both ways. Yeah, it's both ways. I like but your minces. he enjoys their non-rhyming rhyming slangs. So there's Brilliant. that. There's that. Okay. Thanks, Patrick, for sponsoring this. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, it feels Ch good to win. To check with <laughs> all right, I'm going to ask you a quick... Uh, I'm not at all upset that I didn't track that down. I'm going to ask you a quick <laughs> little question now that we've covered the important topic of the day. Well, yeah, um, I feel better. What, are you, uh, what do people know need to know about Plano? The wonderful... You know, I like the way you asked it, and here's why. What do they need to know? Because there's a... Bazillion. I was talking to my kids about the, the biggest numbers, and I was like, you guys are missing bazillion. It's clearly an important term. Sure. There's a bazillion things to know about Plano, and nearly all of them are positive. It's an awesome place. But what people need to know about Plano that often people don't know, that's, where, that's my angle here, is that while it is wonderful, Plano is aging into a, a stage of development where for the first time in its history there are parts of Plano – that aren't the newest, freshest thing going. That's not necessarily a negative. It just provides some variation. Where Plano for years and years was in every magazine, on every list as the top, you know, uh, suburb in America or one of the top suburbs in America, fastest growing suburb, blah, 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 blah. And it's wonderful. But there are some parts of Plano now that are quote unquote older. I mean, mathematically, they are older. But they're being revitalized. And by revitalized, I just mean like the roads are being redone and widened because the population has grown so much. I was driving through Plano yesterday on the way to a kid's sporting event, and I'm like, wow, this looks really cool. They widened the bridge on part of the east side of Plano. And what used to be sort of a log jam of a traffic scenario there, the trees are gorgeous over there. There's awesome city parks and stuff, and you kind of have to wind around them, and it's not annoying because it's pretty but it was an annoying way to commute because it was kind of a bottleneck. Now they've widened all that. So that's what I mean. There are parts of Plano where the roads have gotten a little bit rough because they weren't new anymore. Now they're coming back through and revitalizing that. So you have some choices, you know, West Plano, new, fresh, massive development. East Plano is beginning to be, it's older, but now there's, there's some, you know, updates and revitalization and there's some new life being injected in some of these areas that I won't say stale, but they weren't new, fresh news anymore. Does that make sense? So what people need to know about Plano is you actually have a lot of variety kind of for the first time in a while. Certainly for the last few years, that's been true. But it's not like new, fresh Plano, all the neighborhoods are, you know, there's a bunch of brand new neighborhoods. No, there's some cool older stuff with some big trees and some charm and some winding roads. And then there is the grid pattern area where they built a ton of houses. And there's certainly the super custom, super high end. So you can kind of find all of it in Plano now. And I don't, I don't, I wouldn't have said that 15 years ago about Plano. So pretty cool stuff going on in Plano, Texas. Lots more to talk about, but that's what you need to know that maybe you wouldn't otherwise know. Well, so a lot of people are like relocating to Dallas and to mm -hmm. the area. Mm -hmm. Job transfers are happening. And so like what let's talk about relocation companies. And oh, oh, oh. I know you've got hot oh. opinions. Oh. Mm. Love some. Listen, our listeners may not know that this is sort of you poking the bear here. I'm going to be as I'm going to be as fair and reasonable as I can in my response to this question. Let's call this the big butt segment for today's show because relocation companies do provide a service to some people. But, and I mean, it is a big butt. But almost never the people you would think in my opinion, and I will state this loud and clear as an opinion, but this opinion has been supported by facts and experiences hundreds of times over my 20 plus years in the real estate business. And I'm not saying this about all of them because I haven't worked with all of them, but the vast majority of relocation companies are an absolute disaster. And where their position is they are helping an employee relocate from one office to another, one community to another with a company or with a new company. What they're really doing, 
is borderline extorting a real estate agent. And oftentimes because of their business model and the massive fees they charge, they're attracting, again, oftentimes, not all the times, but oftentimes, the wor- some of the worst real estate agents on the planet. And the reason is they're charging a 35 to 40% referral fee oftentimes for you to, for, uh, they're charging the agent that the agent has to pay the relocation company that fee, 35 to 40%, sometimes 37, 38%. I've seen it as high as 42 or 44% of the commission earned off the top before a split with the broker, before taxes, before licensing fees, before gas and insurance and any investment in the actual client's benefit, Right. Think about someone who's selling a house for somebody and the, everyone thinks their commission's you know big or whatever, and they're paying 40% off the top. What's left after taxes and feeding your family and all these essential items to invest anything in being a better agent or marketing the home? It puts the client at a disadvantage nearly every single time. Now, all, um, again, I keep saying oftentimes because I want to be very careful. There may be someone out there doing this well. I've, I've, I've literally never had that experience. Now, that relocation company in many, many, many ways is providing a service to the business and the business is providing a bunch of clients to them, but the relocation company is adding no value to the transaction. They're, provi- they're requiring a ton of paperwork and process that only inhibits the flow of information in the negotiation process. I'm probably going to get angry emails from this, but that's fine. To prove me wrong. What options does a person have? Like, am I able to say... That's the problem. (sighs) So if your company, let's just call it XYZ Corp. We don't want to pick on anyone. They're like, you know what, Courtney? We think you're wonderful. We're opening a new office in Tahiti. We want you to move there. Would you like to move to Tahiti and we'll pay for your move? And you're going, uh, that sounds pretty great. So you're going to take the job and move to Tahiti, right? Now they're like, hey, talk to XYZ Relo Corp. Um, We're going to pay for your move. They're going to coordinate all that. Now, they provide some service to XYZ Corp, your company, because your company just kind of hands off all the information flow and communication of how you get where you're going and how you're trying, supposed to find your, get your check and pay your movers and all that. So the service has been provided from the relocation company to the corporation that's relocating you. In most of my experience, the company doesn't have to pay for that. They provide that service to the company at almost no charge. They get paid from squeezing the agent for a referral fee. Even though I, in my experience, because we're a developed, mature real estate company, it's almost never a referral. Actually, it's never been a referral. We already had the client. We had done business with them in the past. They were our past client. And then they're like, hey, I'm relocating and I need to use these people because they're paying for my move. And now they said, for me to use you, you have to fill out their paperwork. And now I have to fill out their paperwork and pay them 42% for a referral that was not a referral. Now, there are scenarios where it is a referral. Like, let's just say XYZ brokerage is like, hey, we have this account for all these relocation deals. And you can work with this client that you did not have a pre existing relationship with, but you do have to pay this 38 or 40 or 42% or 35% referral fee. What kind of agent needs that business and is willing to pay that much of a referral fee? It's not always a bad agent, but in my experience, it's very often a brand new agent, an agent that doesn't have enough business, an agent that's not super highly regarded or whatever the case is. And they're willing to pay that, not fully knowing that they're probably not even profitable on their transaction. So they're working really hard. They're taking on a lot of liability or they're calculating, I'm not going to make much, so I'm not going to do much. None of those scenarios are good for the actual home buyer or home seller. Structurally, it attracts lesser quality agents. Now, I'm not saying there aren't exceptions where someone might bust their tail and do the right thing because they're just an honest, hardworking person, but the incentives are not there for that to happen. The incentives are there to get broke real estate agents that don't have a full pipeline that are willing to pay huge fees that are going to net them very, very little profitability on that transaction. That is not a good business model for the consumer, for the actual person who's moving, who's buying and selling. I've given a thousand little caveats there to say there could be exceptions and I'm not talking about everybody, but in my experience in 20 plus years of doing this, that's a, that's how it happens nearly every single time. And what's, uh, what's not said is the client, the buyer and the seller is the one that is often 
taken advantage of. Now, the agent is totally taken advantage of. Very few people have any sympathy for real estate agents. That's just the way it is. I think it's cruddy, but that's the way it is. But the, the buyer, the seller, is typically getting a less qualified agent, a less focused, less committed agent. They're definitely getting an agent that's investing less financial resource and time and energy into the transaction. Uh, and the companies, I think oftentimes they don't know. I don't think they're in on the fix. I think they're just like, cool, what a cool, this is a great value to us and we're moving our person. And the thing in real estate is often the consumer doesn't know what they missed out on because it was a decent enough experience and their expectations were low enough. I know that sounds really bad, but that is the big butt segment for today. And I could keep going, but I won't. Well, do you have any advice? Yeah, my advice would be um, there are some occasions where the relocation company will still let you work with your preferred real estate agent. And very rarely, but on occasion, that agent can negotiate the referral fee with them and say, look, this is my client. I've worked with them five times before. I am not paying you 40%. I will, if my client is going to lose their relocation benefits because of this, I will do it for this fee, but not that fee. Um, and by the way, they shouldn't have to pay any fee because it's not a referral. But if they want to do that to serve their client and take great care of their friend, family, neighbor, past client or whatever, then that's their choice. But that's kind of your best bet with the relocation. Now, if you're working for a small business and they're relocating you, oftentimes you can say to them, hey, what is, what is the relocation package? What are you willing to spend? Because I don't even need that company. I'll take care of moving myself and learning about the area and all of that. If I can use my own agent and they don't have to pay that fee, my agent will actually help me with all, they'll do that. They'll do the job of what you're wanting this relocation company to do. And they're gonna connect me with another agent that I can trust on the other end. And they're gonna show me where the gyms are and the churches are and the schools are and all that which the relocation company was just gonna ask an agent to do anyway. So that's your best option. Another incredible option for you, if you're thinking about enjoying the backyard, the patio, the pool, the, the, the trail, or whatever it is you may have in your landscape this year, is talking to Keen Landscaping about dialing all of that in so that you can enjoy outdoor living this summer. You can enjoy driving up to the house or the condo or the townhome. Uh, design and consultation, landscaping, construction, maintenance, retaining walls, irrigation, tree work, uh, even pools and walkways and all that stuff. Keenlandscaping.com. K-E-A-N-E. Keenlandscaping.com. They did some installation, some warranty work, uh, some new beds uh, at my house and they do the ongoing maintenance at multiple properties that I have. So check them out online. Keen landscaping, K E A N E ask for Ben and tell them Todd Tremonti sent you. Todd, we've been working through your book, five lies that will ruin your real estate career. And today we're hitting the fifth lie. The best agent always wins. Okay, quick caveat. The book is The Five Lies That Will Ruin Your Real Estate Career and... The Truth That Can Make You Wealthy. So if you're thinking about getting into the real estate business, I'd love to give you a free copy of this book. We are absolutely hiring right now for about three new agents between our Richardson office and our Fort Worth office. So if you're thinking about getting into the residential real estate business, people would tell you that now's a bad time. I promise you, now is a great time. When the marketplace demands excellence... It's a great time to get into the business and start your career with excellence instead of one of these kind of feasting seasons where agents are incentivized to get lazy and not build the skills to, to build a business and support your family in all markets at all times. Now's a great time to build those skills, especially here on the Todd Tremonti Home Selling Team. So I'd love to give you a free copy of that book, Five Lies That Will Ruin Your Real Estate Career and The Truth That Can Make You Wealthy if you're thinking about getting into the business. But that lie the um the um the best agent always wins lie here's why that's a lie the most skilled agent rarely wins the client the person that wins the client typically is the best advertiser the best marketer the one with the best reputation and the best image now on the Tatramani home selling team we require we demand we promote we train we equip agents to be both the most skilled and the most well-known, the best marketed, right? So you could be really, really skilled, but nobody knows it. So you have no opportunity. You can be really, really visible and well-known and have a great marketing approach. And a lot of people know it and you'll get a lot of business. The problem is you may not be great at what you do. 
So there's risk on both sides. But if you have to pick one selfishly, the best marketer, the best advertiser typically wins. The most skilled agent doesn't necessarily win out until someone has already hired you and now they're realizing how gifted and how how technically skilled and how your skill set can add value for them. So not only do you need to have those skills, you need to be able to communicate about them to the marketplace. So it's skill set, it's marketing, and there's actually more to it than that because oftentimes that can't be fully delivered completely by yourself all on your own. So there's some team, there's some partnership, there's some uh, cooperation involved as well. But that's lie number five, I think, in the book, The Five Lies. We may or may not continue this segment and go through the 12, uh, the truth. There are 12 points of the truth that can make you wealthy. And that's what we train our agents on here at the Tatramani Home Selling Team all the time. So if you're thinking about getting into the real estate business, uh, we don't hire a lot of people with real estate experience. But if you have, you know, up to 15 or 18 months of experience in you feel like our team might be a good fit for you. Go ahead and go to uh, tatramaniteam.com. You can click on the join the team uh, tab in the menu. If you've never been in residential real estate and you've always thought I'd like to get a real estate license or you're thinking right now you you might enjoy competing with us, growing with us personally and professionally, being challenged and sharpened and encouraged and set up for success, very few people are a fit for us. But we talk to a lot of people and if you're a fit, then you're family and we go to war together. So, uh, find us online, toddtremonteteam.com, and click the Join the Team tab if you're thinking about maybe joining the team. Todd, we have just a few minutes left, but I don't want to close the show without my favorite segment, Todd's Takeaways. I want to know what you're learning this week. Yeah, well, we talked earlier about AI and VR, and I am definitely down the rabbit hole of AI and VR and where technology is taking our industry. So some of my takeaways right now are more about mindset. Uh, you know, a lot of the questions we're getting right now are fear-based, right? So it's like, you know, what's it going to do? What's it going to do to my job? What's it going to do to how we're generating leads? What's it going to do to the tax protest process? And what I would say is one of my takeaways right now, at least for now, is fear is not the right approach to this. Curiosity, uh, humility is the right approach to the future of technology, right? Fear about the internet did not serve anyone well. Right, fear about cellular technology did not serve anyone well. I remember my dad worked for IBM way back in the day and had a cell phone like in the, in the early '80s, like the one that was like mounted to a steel bar, the Zach Morris phone, the one that was wired from the trunk. He had all of them, right? And people were like, "I don't like it. I don't like it one bit." Uh, well, you know, I can tell you in my mind, millions and millions of dollars of income has come through that cell phone right there, right? Now, there's some challenges and some negatives to it, but that's where self-control comes into play. So I think AI is going to follow a very similar footprint uh, or, or, or path. My encouragement to our, our friends and our listeners is be curious, be humble, have boundaries. Uh, but right now, I think both artificial intelligence and virtual reality are going to do some very, very exciting things in the world of residential real estate. And here at the Top Money Home Selling Team, we're going to take advantage of them to benefit our clients, and we're going to leave them outside when it becomes a threat to our ability to serve people at a very high level. Find us online, Todd Tremonti Team.com.